All right, welcome back to Photoshop. And today we're gonna work on another follow along tutorial. So if you'd like to follow along with me, this image will have a link down in the description. Or you can go ahead and just watch what we're doing and then maybe follow along or try it out later. So what we're gonna do is we have this image here and there's nothing wrong with the image, but we're gonna make the image much more dramatic by using lighting effects. Now we're gonna use lighting effects, but we're also gonna be using a couple other lighting techniques as well to add to the drama. The first thing that you need to do is to duplicate the background in this case. So we're just gonna come in here and go Command J or Control J. And I'm gonna make a duplicate layer, which is going to be important. And I'm gonna make sure that that layer is selected. Now the key to making any of this stuff work is to make sure that our selection is really good. So the better the selection, the better that this is going to look. We're gonna come over here, we're gonna grab our new tool and we're gonna go up and hit select subject. And Photoshop's gonna do a pretty good job of selecting an area. Now it's got a little bit too much. I actually don't want this area selected. So I'm gonna grab my lasso, hold the Alt or Option key. So I'm subtracting from my selection. I'm gonna say, hey, I don't want that area. Then we're gonna come up here because you need to refine or do select and mask on any selection that you make. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that. And by default, Photoshop now will refine your mask a little bit. However, it didn't do it perfectly. So we're gonna go ahead and come down here and hit Smart Radius. I'm gonna make sure I have this Refine Edge hairbrush because we need to refine that. And basically, I'm going to paint along the edge, halfway on the animal and halfway out. And you'll see me control the size of the brush. So the brush is actually the inner white line, not the blue line on the outside. And what this is trying to do is just pick up some of those stray hairs and make this selection look a little bit more realistic. Sometimes it does mess areas up, so don't be surprised that if you're doing something and it doesn't look good. So right here, I'm gonna make this selection a little bit bigger. And then we're gonna go ahead and reduce that again, and then I'm gonna go down. You can see right there, it picked up that area. I'm gonna hit Command Z. I don't think we need to do it. Then we're gonna come over here because we need to get the in-between areas of these little whiskers or in this case, I think it's actually an eyelash. Then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna paint along that edge just to make that cleaned up a little bit better. It's got a little bit of the background. And then you can see it's little whiskers there, it didn't pick up. So we're just gonna follow those and say, hey, get this little area too. Otherwise Photoshop won't know what to select. What? Come over here, get these. All right, that looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna keep doing what I was doing before and follow along this edge, make this brush a little bit bigger. It's having a little trouble picking up this area right here, but hopefully it will do an okay job and we'll be good. So that looks pretty good for now. Look, you should really try to make the best selection that you can do when you're doing this type of stuff. Like we've got little errors up here and low in here but I'm not gonna worry too much in a tutorial because it will take too much time to make a perfect selection. So we're gonna go down here. We're gonna change this to new layer with mask. And hit okay. So we've created another layer, but with a mask. And it's important because we're gonna be using this mask over and over again. And we're gonna also invert this mask. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn this layer off. And I'm gonna drag this mask down. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this layer on and select this layer. So right now the white area is the animal and that's the area that we want selected. The first thing we're gonna do is add some the lighting effect to the tiger. So we're gonna come up here to filter and then we're gonna go down to render and to lighting effects. Now lighting effects come up, so I'm gonna make this smaller because I've already done this tutorial once. Then my dog started barking, so we're gonna do it over again. All right, so we're gonna make this smaller just so you can see what it looks like when you, when you do open it. So right now it's round, which is not how it should look. It should look more like this when you open it, more of an ellipse. So this is the highlight or the hot spot, and then you've got these little dots, and the dots let you scale or change the size. So I can grab this dot, click, hold, and drag, and make it wider. 
or I can make it more round and bigger. And as I do this, it's also scaling this hotspot. Now, if you go just outside, notice it switches from scale width to rotate, and that will happen on any of the dots, and that will allow you to rotate this to get it to the angle you want. In this case, I want the light to be coming this direction, so I'm gonna rotate it so it fits like that. And then I'm gonna take this and make this really big, because I want this to be sort of huge. And then we're just gonna come inside and we're gonna drag this. Now I want this inner ring to be a little bit bigger. So what we can do is come over here and you can make your hotspot bigger or smaller. Make it a little bit bigger. You can also come out here and make this bigger. And what I'm gonna do is I actually don't want the center point like right on the center because I want this to kind of fade out this way. I think the hotspot's a little bit too big and that I can just make the whole thing bigger. So I want it to blend or bleed this way. I'm actually going to reduce this down because I need, see how it's an ellipse? I need this more of a circle. So I'm just gonna make this whole thing bigger because I want this to cover from here to here. So I just couldn't see it when I was zoomed in. So now I can move this back. And yeah, now that's hitting that face just kind of how I want. So that looks pretty good. We could colorize this light, but I'm actually gonna make a separate layer to do this colorization. So for right now, we're just gonna leave it how it is. We can also come in here and change the gloss. And so when you make these adjustments, just look in the area. We can change something called metallic. And this is just changing how the spotlight works. For right now, we're gonna leave it and hit okay. Now, I wanted to do it this way so you can see what happens. When I did this, it applied it directly to this layer. If I save this out and come back later, I can't adjust it. I'd have to delete this layer and start over again. I can't adjust the lighting effect. So what I'm actually gonna do is hit Command Z to undo the lighting effect. I'm gonna come out here because we actually wanna turn this into a smart object. So I'm gonna right click out in that gray space and go convert to smart object. What this is gonna allow me to do is come back in and turn this into a non-destructive filter adjustment. I can just reply that by going up here to lighting effects. It's gonna do what I just did, hit okay. And now you can see it's a smart filter and we can turn this on and off. And the best thing is we can come in here and we can adjust it after the fact. So I could save this, come back three days later and still work on this. All you need to do is click on your lighting effect right here, just go double click. It's gonna launch that filter and I can move this around. I can say, okay, that looks better. I can reapply it and we've readjusted it. So now it's non-destructive, which is much, much better. And we're gonna come up here and turn this top layer on, which is gonna override everything, which is okay. Cause we actually want this layer to only affect the background. So I'm gonna select the mask and hit Command I or Control I. And now you can see the white is on the background, meaning that the background is gonna be affected, not the tiger. So what we're gonna do is just create a curves adjustment layer, but I'm not actually gonna make a curves adjustment. I'm actually gonna use a blending mode and just change this to multiply, and that's gonna darken this area. Now it's darkening everything because it's the top layer. So if you want something to darken just a specific area, you can create what's called a clipping mask, and it will say, hey, I want this adjustment to only work here, and since the mask is only on the background, it's only gonna affect the background. So to create a clipping mask, you go in between the two layers and hold your Alt or Option key, and it turns from the hand to this little box with a down arrow, and then you would click, and it makes the little clipping mask, or you can right click, or you can just go out here and right click and say, hey, create clipping mask. So now this adjustment's only on the background. That's a little bit too dark for me, so I'm gonna lower the opacity of that layer, of this curves layer, and it will control, it's almost like adjusting the curve. Now we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna click on this actual image layer, not the mask, the image layer, and we're gonna do another effect. So we're gonna come up here and go filter, and we're gonna go right back down to render, but this time we're gonna do lens flare. So we're gonna go render, lens flare, and what we're gonna do is create kind of like a backlight effect here on this image. And we have different options, so what lens was I using? I can have it make it look like it was with a wide angle lens or this lens, whatever I want. So this is putting this effect on the background. So I can scale this to make it bigger or smaller. You can see it getting brighter. 
basically I want to kind of spill over. So it looks like it's backlit in this image. So I can try the different images here. And since this was sort of shot with a, a wider angle lens, I think we'll go ahead and use that. And I'm changing the anchor point. There's actually a little dot right there. And I want that anchor point to right be in the center of his head. And that looks pretty good. I could move it out here a little bit and that would make sense since the light was coming this way. So we'll go ahead, we'll try that, see if that looks good. We'll go ahead and hit okay. And once again, now this time, because this wasn't a smart object, notice once again, it is making a destructive adjustment, not a non-destructive adjustment. So I can hit Command Z and undo it. Right click, convert to smart object, redo lens flare, okay smart object filter okay so this is important so i did it both ways so you can kind of see what's happening but we want that to be a smart object layer in that case now this lens flare is brightening this curves adjustment quite a bit so i can click back on this curves adjustment and darken this down a little bit and that looks pretty good so what i'm going to do here is important so right here, we've got this smart filter and the smart filter is affecting everything. But since I created a, a smart object, I can't actually adjust this mask. I can, only I can only affect this mask, but you kind of can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna double click right here and it's gonna bring up just that masked image. So what I want, to happen in this case is I want the, this lens flare to look like it's spilling over a little bit and it's not because it's just on the background. So by adjusting a smart object, what happens is the smart object is like an independent photo. If you want to adjust a mask in a smart object, you have to double click and open it and adjust the mask here. So you can see this mask here. We're gonna actually affect the, just that mask. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna take the brush and I'm actually want the flow down to about 4%. I've got my opacity pretty low too. I think I'll raise it up a little bit. But I'm gonna paint on the edge of this mask. So we're applying a little of this backlight adjustment around the edges of the animal to give it sort of a glow to make it look more like a backlight because a backlight would sort of wrap around and give you some edge glow on the animal. The reason I have flow of 4% and I've lowered my opacity, I don't want to do it 100% because it won't look realistic. So this kind of will let me slowly adjust this. So then I'll take my white brush because I want to apply this here. This is already 100% white, so it won't adjust it. I'm just going to paint on the outside area of this. And basically, the more I brush over it using flow, the more spillover I get. So there's certain areas where I want more spillover and certain areas where like back here where I don't want a lot, I don't want a lot there, but I do want more here and here. And you can start to see in this translucent area, some of these areas starting to appear. It won't be as much here, but we'll get some more here. Let's bring it in a little bit more. And that looks, much better, we'll bring it in a little more here. And that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command S to save. And now that will automatically update here. So now you can see we're getting that spill over. So let me hit, go back here for a second. So we'll go back, so here, and then watch this updated smart object. You can see how that spills over. So back, spill over. So we're getting that glow or edge glow that we wanted. And you can go in there and refine that and do it as much as you want. But this is important. This looks pretty good. So the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna colorize this image a little bit. So I'm gonna go up to the top layer and we're gonna come and we are going to, and you can do this a couple different ways. So we can make a hue saturation adjustment. In this case, I'm gonna actually use color lookup. And we're gonna come here to load L, uh, 3D lots and we're gonna drop down to crisp warm look which is this we could also do soft warming look so you could try these different ones out it's not going to affect how it works so 
So we've got Chris warm look and not a big fan of that. What about fall colors? That looks better. And so I think I like that. So we're gonna just stay with that. Now it's a little bit too red. I want this to be a specific color. So then I'm gonna come in and grab my hue saturation tool and I can adjust or colorize this image. So I can click here if I want to colorize it or I can just adjust the colors. So I can come in here and make this a little bit more golden and a little bit more warm. It's getting a little green. Now to get rid of some of that green, I'm actually gonna go into the yellow channel. So I'm gonna click here and go to yellow and I'm gonna actually change the color of the yellow. See how it's more green? I'm gonna make that green more, a little more red. So it's more of a natural looking color. Go back up to master and I can increase my saturation. I'm not a big saturation fan, so I'm not gonna do that, but you can control that. You can also control the brightness of items as well. So now we're gonna turn this on and off and you can see we've sort of colorized or changed the way that this looks here in this image. Now one of the things it did, it got a little, it's getting a little bit dark in here and I want it to be dark, but I don't want it to be that dark. Right here is where that adjustment is and here's my mask. Remember this is a smart mask, so I need to double click on this and bring up the original image and then I need to go into the mask. So it's applying this here. I need to hide a little bit of that. So in this case, I need black. I'm gonna leave that slow flow because this is going to let me blend a little bit. And that looks better, so I'll hit Command S. I know this is kind of weird to look at, but we'll just hit S to save it. I'm gonna leave that there because I can come back in and adjust it. So come here, so now you can see, now we're picking up those colors. So let's go here and go for visibility. This was before and that was after. So much better. So we're getting some blending here. I might've done it a little bit too much. So if it's a little bit too much, like I wanna remove some of that, we'll flip the color to white. Remember, we're just painting in the mask. We're not affecting the image. And so I can paint white on here. I can increase the flow a little bit. So that looks pretty good. And then we'll hit save. Then I can go back to the image. And yeah, now it's getting darker there. So that looks a whole lot better. So go ahead and crop this. The, the reason to make it a six by nine is just because it's a tutorial so you can kind of see what's happened. I don't know if I would exactly crop this image here to an exact six by nine, but we'll go ahead and do that and just kind of lower this image here and hit return. And just like that. Let's go ahead and take this here and select this all the way down to here. We're gonna go ahead and put that in a group and then turn this on and off. So we had this and we went to this. We had this and we went to this. Now I could make this a little bit darker and I think on a final product I might do that. But that is how you use lighting effects and some other lighting techniques to add drama to an image inside of Adobe Photoshop. If you found this video helpful, you can give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.